Midjourney 5.1 is brand new and it's the most impressive text to image model out there, approaching near perfect photo realism. Mastering this technology is going to be essential in the new AI enabled world. Whether you're a complete novice or a seasoned Midjourney user, this tutorial has got you covered. We're starting with the basics for beginners, but don't worry, we'll dive into advanced techniques that will truly elevate your image creating prowess. We'll explore generating fresh images from local files and reveal crucial parameters to make your pictures stand out like never before. We currently access Midjourney through Discord. So if you don't already have it, head over to discord.com, download and install it. Once you've done that, head over to midjourney.com. Once here, you can sign in by clicking this sign in button at the bottom right hand corner of the page. This will prompt me to link my Discord account to the Midjourney service. Click authorize. Once authorized, we can head to manage subscriptions. And here you'll be able to see the features and to sign up for the various different plans that they have. I have the cheapest $10 a month plan. I haven't run into any usage limits. It's been fine for me. So I'd probably recommend that one. Once we've done that, head over to the main Midjourney server in Discord, and then you can start writing your prompts in here straight away. However, one thing that I would recommend is creating your own server and then inviting the Midjourney bot into your server to avoid your images getting mixed up with everybody else's. We do that by clicking on the plus icon on the bottom left-hand side corner of Discord at the bottom of your channel list. Once you've done that, head back into the main Midjourney server, find the Midjourney bot, click on it, and then click this add to server button. Now select your new server, the name of your new server, and then you can click continue and it will add the Midjourney bot to your new server. So once inside Discord, there are only really two key commands you need to know. The first one is forward slash settings. This brings up the Midjourney settings panel. Here you can select various different things. Uh, I would recommend adding this remix mode as it allows you to change your prompt later. And also crucially, you can change the version of Midjourney that you want to use. So here you can see I can use version one, two, three, four, five, or the latest 5.1. Now, how do I know which version of the model I want to use? Um, well, it depends and you have to just experiment. If you look here, all of these images were created with the same prompt and we've just changed the model version. So this one was made with version four, this one was made with version five, and this one was made with version 5.1. Now you can see the styles are just all very different, so you have to just experiment. This is the structure of a text prompt, how we actually get Midjourney to create images for us. Forward slash, imagine, and then our prompt. It's important to be as specific as possible in our prompt, and Midjourney tell us to focus on the subject, the medium, the environment, lighting, color, mood, and composition. So here we're searching for pictures of cats and in the prompt, it basically specifies a medium. So we can specify cats in the style of a block print or folk art or graffiti, pixel art, etc. And you can see those produces very significantly different images. We can be even more specific and we can ask it for a specific type of sketch of a cat, for example. So we could say a life drawing of a cat, a continuous line sketch of a cat, um, a charcoal sketch of a, of a cat, etc. So it's incredibly flexible. We can even specify an era. So give me a picture of a cat that's in the 1800 style, 1950s, 1970s, 1990s, for example. This website is really useful for coming up with ideas for your prompts. So you can search, for example, genres, artistic techniques, anime styles, architects, names of designers, or fashion designers, filmmakers, illustrators, painters. Um, so for example, if you don't know lots of different types of photographers, you can come here and get a sense of their style by name, and then you can put these into your prompts. 
I'll put the link in the description below. So now let's look at advanced prompts. So this is similar to a normal text prompt, but you can add image prompts and also parameters. First of all, you put your image, then you put your text, and then you put your parameters. So let's do an example of generating an image from another image. So I want to generate a new image based on a local file I have. So I'm just gonna upload that local file. Now it's uploaded, I can right click and I can copy the link. And now I can incorporate this image into my prompts. So for example, forward slash imagine, paste in the link to my picture, space, and then the prompt that I want. So I am going to turn this image into a photo. So this is the prompt I've prepared. It says, a rat dressed in human clothing, photo in the style of David Bailey, black and white, studio lights. So these are the images it produced. Wow, they're really cool actually, very nice. And then in the same manner, I can either click on the U, which is to upscale to make it bigger, or I can produce variations of the four images. So this is V1, V2, V3, V4. Finally, let's talk about parameters and how you can use those to really fine tune the images you're getting out of Mid Journey. Parameters come at the end of your prompt. So you can see you have the image prompt, the text prompt, and then at the end, the various parameters that you want to include. So the first parameter is the aspect ratio, which is dash dash AR. And here you can specify how big you want the dimensions of the image to be. So by default, they're one by one squares, but you can also specify these different aspect ratios as well. The next parameter is chaos. Now chaos is a parameter that influences how varied the initial image grids are. So you've seen when you produce an image in Mid Journey, you get four pictures back initially. Those are pretty, pretty similar typically um, because the chaos default value is zero. Raising the chaos number to say 50 will make the images more different. So here we can see low chaos numbers. See the images are quite similar to each other. And then we have higher chaos numbers where the images are very different from each other. The next parameter I want to talk about is quality or dash dash Q. The default, default value is one. And then the higher the value that you give it, the more detail that the image will have. Uh, it's worth saying it will also cost you more as well. And then the final parameter that I want to speak about is no, or the ability to remove or negate certain things from your prompt. As an example, you can see here in Discord, I produced um, a prompt just that said fruit bowl. So here you can see there are four images of fruit bowls. Two of them have bananas, and only three have bananas. And then I ran the same prompt again, but I put dash dash no banana. And here you can see each of these images does not have a banana in. So it can be really useful in just removing certain things that you don't want to be in the image. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing so I can make more videos like this one. See you in the next.